Home Assistant is back with yet another great release for this August 2024. With this release, we now have something called as badges. You can now add new badges to Sections Dashboard, specifying your entity that you want to see as a badge. You can customize its appearance, for example, change the icon and also customize how interaction with this batch works. As for the other UI cards, you can also set certain visibility conditions for viewing these batches. Along with this, you can also rearrange the batches by drag and drop. Next, we have some changes in some naming convention. The term services was a bit ambiguous. We are mainly talking about the menu item devices and services, which holds various integrations with external services. Now, this was ambiguous with service calls, which is now renamed to actions. This is reflected in the developer tool section, which has this tab renamed to actions, which was previously called as services. Similarly, if you go to the automations and add a new action, you have this perform action, which was previously called as called services. Now, an important factor is that if you have created your automations using the UI, this changes will be done automatically for you and you don't have to do anything. In case you have custom written automations in YAML, then using the service or action would still work as this change is backward compatible. Next, Home Assistant now tracks when entities, devices, and many other things are created or modified. You can now see them in the table by making them visible, and then you can also sort them by date when they were created or last modified. Now, in the previous releases, Home Assistant supported being controlled using large language models from OpenAI and Google AI integrations. Now, in this release, Home Assistant now supports being controlled using local large language models too. This is a major step towards allowing complete local AI control. Next, we have quite a good number of integrations from the community, and this is all because of this awesome community developers. Kudos to them. Next, we have some already present integrations that can now be set up from the UI. If you recognize your manual integrations from this list, then you can now set them up from the UI. Now, Zigbee Home Automation also has some changes, but now this is not in terms of something that you can see, but in terms of code that supports Zigbee Home Automation. The whole integration is now moved to a separate code base to make it easier and improve this further. Now let's look at some of the Matter updates. Home Assistant is working towards getting the official Matter certification and for this they are continuously making improvements. In this release, Home Assistant will be able to notify you and update your Matter based devices when manufacturers provide firmware updates using the official Matter update channel. Now, this is really good as in we can just rely on Home Assistant to update our Matter devices and we don't have to rely on third party apps to update Matter devices. <coughs> Google. KNX entities can now be integrated using the UI. I currently don't have this integration, but if you do, then you can configure them from the UI. Now, integrations that were set up using YAML configuration and didn't have a UI to integrate them are now visible as integration cards in your integration page. Now, this is a step towards getting all manual integrations to be visible on the UI. Now, integrations resulting from YAML configuration can be recognized by this code icon. Next, let's look at some of the noteworthy changes. We now have Open Home Foundation logo being shown on the Home Assistant loading screen, as well as we can now see them on the About page of Home Assistant. Next, we have Timer supported in Assist for your mobile phone. If you launch Assist using your mobile phone and set a timer, then when the timer completes, it then shows up a notification that the timer has finished. Next, in the helper section, the group helper now provides grouping by button and notify entities. We also have button, image, select and switch template entities that can now be created using the UI. Now, yet another change in the developer tool section is that we can now have a button that will help you to copy the response or copy the response as a JSON to be used in templates. Now, I keep on making videos around how you can make things smart. So make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come now if you want to support this channel there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via patreon now till then take care and i will see you in my next one